bless the name of the Lord. We are here again this morning. Amen. This is Stephanie Johnson with Evangelist Stephanie Johnson. And you're watching just the word. Amen. I was just a little lost track of time for a second there, but I'm just gonna wait for a moment here. Allow some more people to come on. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Got one of hand waves from my sister. God bless you. I'm gonna wait another minute and then I'll begin. Make sure you have your coffee, your notepads, your tea, hot chocolate. The weather's getting cold, so it's time for something hot. Amen. Good morning, Sister Cunningham. That's my friend, my Skid Row ministry friend. Good morning. God bless you. Amen. I'm going to get started here in just a moment. Amen. It's good to get to see you, your name there. And now I'm visualizing you. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Well, once again, this is just the word with Evangelist Stephanie Johnson. Amen. And um, we're just grateful to God. Uh, thankful to be in another day. Thankful that we woke up. And so, gracious Father, we thank you right now. Hallelujah for just the word. Just another session, oh God, that we can disseminate the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just not, not our opinions, not our philosophy, philosophy, but just the word. And so God, we first want to thank you that you woke us up to see a new day with the activities in our limbs and the blood is running warm in our veins. God, we live and we move and we have our being in you. And so we thank you this morning for your mercies and your compassions that we rose to this morning. We thank you for the benefits that you're loading us up with in this day. We thank you, hallelujah, for your love and your kindness and your tender mercies. God, we thank you, hallelujah, for the anointing that will destroy every yoke. We thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost, Lord. We thank you for sanctification Ah, God, your grace and your mercy. Yes, Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God. We could be on the street. We could be without food. We could be without shelter or clothing. But God, you saw fit, God, that we have every provision. You have supplied all of our need. And so we thank you this morning. I thank you for those that are coming on. And I thank you for those that will be watching later, God. Lord, let something be said, Lord God, that will save, most of all, save the unsaved, that will reclaim backsliders, God, that will encourage the discouraged and even encourage those of us that are already encouraged, that we increase our faith, that we increase our, 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 our fasting and our prayer and our study in you, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for everything that you have done. And Father, I thank you for what you're yet going to do. Let your word penetrate the stony heart. Let your word, Lord God, lift up, Lord God. Let your word, oh God, do what it's designed to do in the name of Jesus. And God, I praise you and I give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise God. It could have been me outdoors. And I was just listening to that song. It, it could have been me. I could have been just another number. I could be dead and gone, sleeping in my grave. 
But God, hallelujah, saw fit that each and every one of us to be alive and well in this day. It's a beautiful day. I, I thank God I sit here and I have my window right here. Amen. I can see the sky and there's no clouds and the sun is shining. And it's just, look, every day is a great day to be alive. Hallelujah. And so we are thankful this morning. Even if you don't feel well in your body, uh, you, you know, you might, something might be going on with you, but you're alive. Amen. And you have another opportunity to draw closer to God because God said, if you draw nigh unto me, I'll draw nigh unto you. Amen. And so ain't nobody better to be closer to than God. Amen. Everything else is secondary. Amen. Everything else uh, appeases the flesh, but there's nothing like being near and dear to our God. Amen. And so this morning, amen, I'm going to talk about um, uh, the, the church and, and our obedience to the commission that, that Christ has given us. Amen. And I, I'm always, you know, I'm, I'm always turned on and up. Amen. In the gospel. Amen. Let me, let me get that straight because we have some young people might be listening in. I, I'm not turned up on nothing else, but in Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and, and the spirit of the Lord, he make it alive. Amen. And so we want to talk about the commission, you know, what, what Jesus Christ told us that we should be doing. Because, you know, in the in the days, in, in these recent days, it, it, I, I don't know about you, but I, I, I feel a sense of relief. Amen. Now, not a sense of a, a, a total uh, blind and, and shut my eyes down and naive, but a sense of relief. Amen. May not agree with everything that 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 leaders in government say or do, amen. But we need someone that will have a, a compassion and a concern for people, amen. And so there's a sense of relief in the air, amen. And 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 but we don't want to let our guards down because we're still living in the last days, amen. And perilous times are here, amen. They're not coming; they're here, amen. And so we have to be mounted up. In the Holy Ghost, thank you, Holy Ghost. We have to to keep our shield. We have to be vigilant, Amen. We have to be dedicated, Amen. We 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 cannot let down nor compromise as the body of Christ. Now, when I talk about what the church's commission is, I'm not talking about any particular denomination, Amen, or or organization. I'm I'm talking about the church, which is the body of Christ. Amen. And we are all different members fitly joined together in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And so what are we doing, amen, during this time? Uh, you know, this is not the 1920s, amen. This ain't the roaring 20s. This is not the rebellious 60s and 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 and, and the crazy 70s and hey, we are living in the last days in the 21st we're in the 21st century. Amen. We're in the last days. So what are we doing? Amen. In these last days, many people talk about the last days, but do we really understand what the Bible says about what's going to be happening in the last days? Amen. But you know, I don't understand. I don't think we clearly understand what we're going to be dealing with in the last days. But if we open our Bibles, amen, if we open up this Bible, hallelujah, and read what the prophets have declared, what God has, what Jesus said in his word, amen, then we'll understand what's going on and what we'll be approaching in the last days. So we, but we do definitely know this is it. Amen. I, I, I remember Michael Jackson, and before he died, he had some type of press conference or whatever, a news conference, and, and he said, this is it. And he didn't realize <laughs> what was going to be happening to him. But this right here, where we live right now in the generation and the time and the dispensation that we live in, this is it. Amen. We are in what the Bible said we'd be in, earthquakes in diverse places. Amen. A, a pestilence, disease, wars, and rumors of wars. Don't let your guard down because uh, somebody got elected to office. Oh, no. Mm. We got to yet be vigilant and sober. 
Amen. We got to yet keep our keep our, our focus and our mind on what God said. So as the body of believers, what is our commission? And it's simple. You know, I've been studying in the book of Acts, and, and there's so much. You, you just can't rush through it. You just got to take your time, amen, and allow the Lord to minister to you, amen, because I've been in, in the first chapter of Acts in study, amen, for a, a couple of weeks, several weeks. But it, in the Bible, it tells us as a body of born-again believers that we have been commissioned we have been charged, we have been mandated to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what we should be doing. So my mandate this morning is to encourage you as a believer in what we are supposed to be doing. You know, we, there's a lot of things that have gone on uh, in organizations and in religions and in churches. Amen. But, 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 but. It's not about all of that. You know, Jesus gave us what he wanted us to do, and it's simple. Now, the mission, as we go on to do it, uh, we will encounter resistance, as a word came up yesterday, and our adversary and, 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 and challenges. But we're yet to carry on the mandate and the mission of the body of Christ. Of, of the body of Christ. Amen. You know, the Bible said, be a good soldier. Amen. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We are good soldiers of Jesus Christ. We don't complain and murmur. And, look, we expect challenges and obstacles. We expect the enemy to come against us while we go on living this holy and saved life. Wow, and especially when you begin to step out and go into the devil's territory and take souls and re reclaim backsliders and tell the people about Jesus Christ. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let me just read the scriptures. <laughs> Matthew 28 and 19 says, Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. I remember when I was in basic training and we had drill sergeants and after a while I became, you know, kind of like in not a drill sergeant, but I was able to motivate the soldiers and encourage them and work with them that we get the job done that we were uh, um, uh, commanded to do. Amen. And so now, as a soldier of Jesus Christ, we got to go into all the world. We got to go. We got to get up off of our seats of do nothing and go. Now, I realize we're in a pandemic. Amen. So put your mask on. You don't have to shake hands and hug right now or lay your hands. But all you have to do is speak a word. Hallelujah. Just speak the word and it shall be so because it's not in what we do is not done by might it's not done by power but it's by my spirit saith the lord hallelujah and so it's by the spirit of god that's in you that's working through you that's going to get the job done that's going to save an individual we got to go into all the world and 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 and, and, and teach all nations amen and when jesus was talking to his disciples right before he was getting ready to go and no i'm sorry when he came back Amen. And he was talking to his disciples and he was giving them their mandate. And he told them, he said, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Of the earth. He's with us. We don't have to fret. We don't have to worry. We just have to go. Amen. And do what God told us to do. Amen. When he told the disciples this, Amen. Even if when you look in the book of Acts in the first chapter, amen, uh, the, the, the physician Luke records, amen, how the mandate was given. And when the disciples got the mandate, they were given, told to go to the, to, 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 to back to Jerusalem and tarry until you be endued with the power of, from on high. Then 
uh, Acts 1 and 8 tells us that ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So he's not just going to send us out empty handed, but he's going to send us out with his power. Amen. With his anointing, uh, because it's going to be the anointing that's going to destroy the yoke. It's God's anointing. It's not what we say or what we do or how we look, but it's the anointing of God in your life that will destroy the yoke. So when he told the disciples and gave them their commandment, amen, what did they do? They went back to Jerusalem and they waited. <laughs> and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, oh God, glory, hallelujah, they were baptized with the Holy Ghost and got the power. Amen. That's another lesson. Well, I want, I want to stay with the commission, amen, uh, 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 of a Christian, amen. And so the disciples, they, they went home and they began to, after they were filled with the Holy Ghost, they began to, to preach and to teach. Matter of fact, Peter was the first one to give the message to the Jews. Amen. He gave the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then they went, amen, you know, after um, the stoning of Stephen. Amen. Then, you know, first they were at Jerusalem, they were at home. And right now in this pandemic, everybody's at home, you know, we, we, we can't do as much as we used to do. Amen. But we still have a mandate and God will give you a strategy and he'll give you a way to get the gospel out because the word, the results of the word of God, like I talked, talked about last week, will still come to be and come to fruition. Amen. But the disciples, they went out. After Stephen was stoned, see, the, the stoning of Stephen, when I was studying this, I, I likened it to this pandemic. You know, uh, the, the stoning of Stephen caused the church, the disciples to be dispersed. It caused them to, to leave out of their homes, amen, and to go and to spread the gospel. Where this pandemic, according to the CDC and rules, you know, it caused a lot to stay, a lot of people to stay home, but God word and his program does not cease and he will give us how to do and what to do if we have a heart and a mind to carry out the mandate the mandate of jesus christ so the disciples went out and they ended up going to samaria they ended up going to judea judea and caesarea where uh, the gentiles amen were preached to by a uh, um, uh, uh, Paul, amen, and, and, and then Philip went to Samaria, amen, and then different churches were birthed, amen, in Syria and in Rome, amen, and, and, and Gentile city is like um, Iconium and Lystra and Derby, and so the gospel went out, amen, Shaya, they went out, they obeyed regardless, and they suffered persecution, they suffered stonings. Many disciples uh, were, were, were uh, many Christians were, were boiled. Can you imagine? And being dropped and, and boiled and, 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 and being beat and being beheaded. Amen. I believe it was James that was, that was beheaded. Amen. But, but, but they yet carried out the mandate. Listen, we're not suffering like they were suffering, but there are some martyrs of Christ. There are voices of martyrs that are being killed and stoned and beat and jailed for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And here we are in America, such as it is, and we won't even go and tell nobody about Jesus. Well, shame on you. Glory to God. Hi. <laughs> Listen, he told us in Mark 16 and 15, he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Somebody might say, well, what, what am I supposed to be doing, Sister Stephanie? Teaching and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, telling somebody that Jesus is Lord. You know, the mission of the church is to glorify God to edify the believers and to evangelize the church. I mean, evangelize the world, excuse me. That's our mission, amen, as a body of born again believers. What are you doing? Uh-oh, that's the question. What are you doing? Romans, God in heaven, Romans 1 and 16. Look, somebody came and told you about Jesus Christ. You heard it somewhere. Amen. And then faith came by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you. And that's why we are saved 
Amen. We're saved uh, uh, by grace through faith. In Jesus Christ. Somebody had to tell us about the gospel. We had to hear it. Maybe we went to church when we was little or however it was. But we heard the gospel. What did Paul, Romans 1 and 16 said? Paul said, I, I, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. To everyone that believeth. To the Jew first. Amen. And also to the Greeks. Amen. So the gospel, that's what delivered you. Hallelujah. Don't tell me that AAA delivered you because I know it didn't. And don't tell me the drug rehabilitation delivered you because I know it did. Didn't. Don't, don't, don't tell me that, 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 that this or that delivered. It was the gospel. Hiya, Messiah. The gospel of Jesus Christ that delivered you. Hallelujah. Uh, First Corinthians, somebody might say, well, what is the gospel, Sister Stephanie? Well, let me take you to just the word. Go to First Corinthians chapter 15. Matter of fact, please, somebody type that in. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. And that way, when somebody's going back through here and they kind of reading all over, uh, over all of everybody's responses, they'll see that scripture and hopefully they'll go to it. But what is the gospel? Well, Paul said, I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he wrote, oh, that's not the end of the story, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again ah, with all power in his hand. It was the sacrificial blood of Jesus Christ that saved us. It was the sacrificial blood of the lamb. Oh, that's why there's power in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's saving in the blood of Jesus. There's deliverance in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The blood that Jesus shed for the remission of our sins. And so we have a mandate, amen, to preach and teach the gospel, that's it. I'm not preaching Scientology. I don't preach uh, uh, my ontology, my own uh, uh, Stephanieology. Uh, we have a mandate to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Somebody type in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. But that's our mandate is to deliver the gospel. Amen. To carry the gospel to a dying world. People are hungry. Oh, we go out on set on Sundays. Amen. And, and people are hungry. They hung. Listen, they, they, people be wondering, where's the church? Not, not where's the church of God in Christ or the, 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 the apostolic church or the Baptist church or the uh, AME or, or, or the church of this or that. They're wondering, where are the Christians? Where are the people that say that they believe, oh God, that say that they believe in the almighty God? Hallelujah. We were up, man, that wind, that hawk was blowing yesterday. Signs were blowing out of our hands and everything, and we were going against the, it was like we were going against the current. And and, and, and Sister Jackie said it's like a, 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 a signs were like a sail, amen. That wind was hawking, but we were pressing forward because we were on a mission, hallelujah, to just hold up the word, just get the word out to the people. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. And we passed by lunatics and a, a, a person, a, a, one of them and then other things. But there's a mandate. And it's not just that, but there are different ways. While you're standing in the grocery store line, that's why you need to keep some tracks in your purse. Keep some tracks in your wallet, man. Hallelujah. Keep some tracks in your purse, women. Amen. Because when you're in the marketplace and, 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 and you're in the bank line, you can just Pass the gospel out. You can just hand out a tract and say, God loves you. Things are getting better. Amen. Things are going to be all right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Look, Paul said, I am debtor to both the Greeks and to the barbarians, both unto the wise and the unwise. We are debtors. Since God saved our lives, we owe God. He said, oh, Holy Ghost, present your bodies a living sacrifice 
holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. This, the least you can do is tell somebody else uh, about the good news. At least that's what the gospel is, the good news of Jesus Christ. That's the least you can do. After all, God saved us. Amen. He sent his only, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son to die for us that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And then 17 says, for Jesus came not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So we don't have the right to condemn nobody, but we have the right to tell somebody, oh yes, Lord, about Jesus Christ. Amen. We have a mandate. We are debtors. We have a moral obligation to tell our family, to tell our neighbors, to tell Shalaboshe, the stranger, to tell our enemies. Amen. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. To tell the addict. Hallelujah. Our co-workers, we have a moral obligation mm, to God. And to our fellow man, I wish I could make an a, a, a inaugural speech. Amen. I would be like my fellow Americans. Jesus saves. <laughs> That's it. Hallelujah. But we have a moral obligation. Amen. You might can't go across the world. You shall let it see. You might not be able to go across the world, but you can go across the street. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You might not be able to go across the world, but you can go across the street. You might not be able to go around the world, but you can go around the corner. Amen. And tell somebody about the Lord. Amen. Listen, somebody went out of their way. Amen. To tell the Lord, tell you about God. Amen. To tell you about the goodness of the Lord. To tell you that God loves you. Amen. In spite of your sins, in spite of being messed up, in spite of being toe up from the floor up. Listen, them people went, they went looking for Paul and Silas and them in the house of Jason. And, and they said, we're looking for them people that keep on turning this world upside down. Now we got to do away with these people. Who shall let it say? We got to do away with this. They turning the world upside down. Well, what are we doing now? The world shouldn't be turning us upside down. We should be turning the world upside down with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's go out and turn this world upside down. Amen. Share with your family. Tell your family members. Amen. All of us have some family members that need to be saved. All of us have some family members that don't know the Lord. And I don't care how many years you've been witnessing to them. None of us came right away. It took some work. It took some patience. Amen. And it took a holy life. I remember, and I'm, I'm going I'm to close with this. I remember there were some people that I used to freebase with. Oh, hallelujah. And, 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 and me and David wasn't married then. We were just living large and, 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 and drinking and doing all of what we want to do. Amen. And, 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 and we were sitting outside uh, by our pool and, and, and some people came walking down the corridor. And I looked, I said, wow, that looked like, you know, now I'm not going to name their name. And, 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 and I had free, I used to free base with them back in the, this was the late 80s when we saw them or the early 90s. But I used to free base with them in the 70s, late 70s, early 80s. And we saw them and we saw the change that had come over their lives. And they began to witness to us. And then they would call and come back. And I would hide behind the curtains. I'd be like, here they come. Oh my, you know, we closed the blinds. But then I found myself going and opening the door because the Lord was drawing me. It shall let it say. So it takes time and it takes patience. Amen. Be not weary in well-doing. Don't get weary because they don't answer right away. Don't get weary because they talk about you at the family dinner. Don't get weary because they don't like you. Amen. After a while. The Bible said, now, this is what the Bible said. He'll make your enemies to be at peace with you. They may be your family member. Jesus said, uh, 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 my foes are they are my own household. Amen. So, but after a while, your life and your stance in Jesus Christ will give them something to look at and realize that this is real. Shut up. Amen. Tell your family, start there. Amen. And then stretch out. 
move out, amen, and go into all the world and preach the gospel. There is no reason, no excuse that nobody has that they can't tell somebody about Jesus Christ because we all live next to somebody. We all got to go to the store and get some food. We all have to go to the gas station and get some gas. We got to do this and we got to do that. Amen. Just put a track. If you're not a talkative person, amen. Because don't let the people start getting upset about the line being long. Be like, you know what? God is keeping us. He might be keeping us from something. It might be an accident getting ready to happen. And he's keeping us. Well, we just need to thank God. You know, show some loving kindness and give the people a different perspective to see things. Amen. Gracious Father in heaven, I certainly thank you right now for your word. Because it is quick, it is powerful, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So you know what the intents of the hearts are this morning. And your word has gone forth, and it has pricked, it has stirred up, it has encouraged, and above all, it has saved. And so I want to thank you for that right now, dear God. And if you are not saved and you're watching this, all you have to do is repent. You don't have to go nowhere. You don't have to do, just talk to God right where you are and say, Lord, forgive me of my sin and save my soul. Just tell him, Lord, I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again. Hallelujah. And I want to be saved. It's as simple as that. Amen. And if you have prayed that prayer while, uh, while you're watching this, you're saved. Amen. You're saved according to the Bible. Then you ask God, lead you. I remember when I was not saved, I used to tell the people, God going to deliver me from this. I didn't even know what deliverance meant. I just was saying it, but he did it. And then I asked God, lead me to the right religion, to the right church, because I was raised, and I'm not saying none of this stuff is wrong, but I was raised in the Baptist church. Then when I went out and I got grown, I started, I experimented with the Muslims. I experimented and was talking to the Jehovah Witnesses. And then when I was in different places and girls' homes and stuff, they was going to Catholic church and all that. But when I got grown, I decided I was not going to play. I'm going to go on and live my life and do what I'm going to do. But I always, in my heart, I said, God going to lead me to the right thing. And he didn't lead me to a religion. He led me to a way of life which was holiness. The Bible said, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And so we want to thank God today, amen, for his word. Amen. We want to thank God, amen, for saving souls, encouraging hearts, and lifting up our spirit. Oh, God in heaven, uh, share this video. Share, if, if you want to hit like, that's cool too. But most of all, share this video. Amen. I'll be downloading it to YouTube and you can go to just the word Stephanie Johnson and it will pull up all of the videos that the Lord has allowed me to do thus far. Amen. And it'll take me about 30 minutes or so an hour to get this video downloaded because I'll be doing some other things. But <clears throat> share it. Share it. Share it. And remember, let's tell somebody about Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God bless you until we meet again. Whoop. Clap your hands in Jesus name. Amen.